Hi there. I've seen a few questions come in recently about how to work with WebSockets uh, and in particular how to get prices from uh, from crypto exchanges using web WebSockets and how to get those into Excel using Pixel. So this video will just cover the, the very basics of that. Uh, to begin with, we're going to use this WebSockets package to actually handle the WebSockets connection in Python. So if you don't have that installed already, you can just go ahead and install that using pip. So pip install WebSockets, that'll go and find that and install it if you don't already have it. Uh, and then online, you'll be able to find the WebSockets uh, documentation here. So, you know, here it's got a simple example of here's how we connect to a WebSocket and sending and receiving. And that's basically going to be what we're going to do in, in this example. Uh, so if we look here at the code that I've got, it's very similar to that, uh, that example that we just saw in the documentation. Uh, I'm creating a WebSocket connection to this BitMEX URI. Uh, and then I'm sending a message. And then I've got this while loop here. And I'm just looping over uh, receiving messages from the socket, loading them from JSON into a Python dictionary, and then printing the data. So a little bit more on this WebSockets API. This is the BitMEX exchange. And you can find their documentation online as well. They have a, a page for WebSocket API documentation. And basically all the commands that you can send them are, are listed here. So if we go to the subscribe command, and you can see that you can pass it a load of arguments. And in these docs, you'll find, find out what those arguments are. But in here, what I'm doing is connecting to this URI and then sending a message to say subscribe. And I'm subscribing to this XBT USD instrument. Now, if we run that, what we'll see is hopefully, yeah, every time uh, something happens here, I'm receiving a message and then I'm just printing the data that comes out. So it's coming back in this Python dictionary format. Now you'll notice that this function here is an async function. Uh, and what that means is unlike a normal Python function, it doesn't run just purely synchronously. It runs in what's called the async IO event loop. So in my main section here, what I'm doing is getting the async IO event loop for this thread and then creating a task. So here I'm calling this main async function. What that's actually doing is creating a coroutine and then I'm calling create task to tell the async IO event loop to run that coroutine at some point in the future. What this does is it lets uh, Python inter interweave bits of blocking functionality. So if we look in here, for example, we'll see that in this while true loop, we're saying a wait WebSocket receive. Now what this a wait does is it tells the Python async IO loop that we want to get the result of this in a bit, but this thing is written in such a way that it will yield to that event loop. So when we say a wait on this, that means that other things that are on the event loop are then free to, to run and we'll get this thing here will continue only once we've received that from the WebSocket. So it's, it's kind of technical. There's a lot more online that you can read about it. Uh, but it's really the, the key takeaway here is that async programming using async IO in Python is really useful when you're doing things that are IO bound. So things where we're blocking on, on here on a WebSocket, for example, where we don't want our whole process to freeze. We just want to, we just want this bit to stop until that's received. So this is the, the real basics of how we can use this WebSocket connection to get some data out of the BitMEX API. What I want to show next is going a little bit beyond this and taking this basic code uh, and turning it into something a little bit more usable. So I've got uh, some more code here. Before I dive into this too much, I just want to show you what the, what the idea behind this code is and why we're doing this. So in my main function in this module, unlike this one, where my main is really just creating the event loop and then running this thing. What I've got here is this bitmex class, which we'll come to in a minute. Here I'm saying on the bitmex class, subscribe. And what this is doing is saying, listen to events for this ticker or this symbol where this field is changing. And every time the, this field on this ticker changes, call this callback. I'm then waiting for 60 seconds and then unsubscribing. So this is telling the BitMEX class, I don't need the subscription anymore, so you can, you know, you can get rid of it. Uh, this callback's taking the symbol field value and the timestamp. 
So if I just run this now, what we'll see this time is that rather than getting ticks for everything that's changing, now we'll just get ticks coming through for this XBT USD ticker and the last price field. So we're only getting updates whenever you know this field is changing. So going back to this BitMEX class, uh, let's see kind of how I've, how I've implemented that. To begin with, there's the two main uh, methods that we were looking at here. There was the subscribe and unsubscribe method. What's going on in here is that when you call subscribe, first of all, if the WebSocket isn't connected already, then we'll connect it. And then we'll add in the, there's a subscriptions dictionary, so that keeps track of everything that we're subscribed to. So that's really mapping this combination of symbol and field to this callback. So uh, here, what we're doing is saying, if we're not already subscribed to this symbol, then send that message to the WebSocket. You remember before in the previous example, where initially we just sent this message here at the beginning of this loop. Now we're doing that when we subscribe. So when we subscribe to a, a symbol in a field, if we haven't already subscribed to this symbol, then we send that message uh, and then add this callback to a dictionary of subscriptions. So this subscriptions dictionary here is a dictionary going from symbol to field to this callback here. And finally, in the subscribe method, if we've already received some data for this, for this symbol and field, we send it to the callback. Uh, when we're just subscribing to one ticker, this, this isn't such a, an issue, but as we'll see later, we can subscribe to the same symbol for multiple fields. So it's, it's nice to be able to call the callback immediately rather than waiting for it to, to update. Uh, if we go now to this connect method that we saw briefly here, see what that's doing we can see that what we're doing here is setting this flag running to true to say that we want, you know, we want uh, the, the loop that's responsible for receiving those messages to run. Uh, we'll see that again in a, in a second. And then here we're creating the WebSocket. So here we're using the WebSockets connect with the same URI. So this is the same as what we did here. But instead of doing it in this main thing here, we're just doing it in this connect method. So we're saying, you know, the WebSocket on this thing is the result of connecting to this URI. Finally, what we're doing is creating this task, this running task using this coroutine run here. And this is the equivalent of this loop here. So rather than having it being this, this, and this, we've broken it out uh, and we're saying that once you've created the WebSocket, then start running this task on the async IO event loop. And that's doing pretty much the same as the previous one. And it's saying while this flag is set while well, this running flag is set, then receive anything from the WebSocket and then process whatever you've received. And we'll come on to that in a second. While we're looking at connect, let's look at disconnect. That's doing essentially the same kind of thing in reverse. We're setting the running flag to false. So that will mean that this run loop stops. Uh, we're then closing the WebSocket, saving it to none so that we know to, to create it again if we need it again. And then this await running task here is just waiting for this function to finish. So by awaiting on this, we're just saying, okay, just finish until like this has done its final loop and exited out, and then we're done. In the run method, we've got this process message. And what that's doing is looking at this data that we received before. Previously, we were just printing it out. So if I run this again, you know, we can see the dictionary that we're getting here. We're getting things like this instrument table and it's saying this one's an update and it's these are the things that are being updated. Uh, but instead of just printing it out here, we're looking at this dictionary. We're seeing what symbol the update's for, what the timestamp of the update is for. Uh, and then iterating through everything in this update and seeing what subscribers we've got. So what callbacks have been registered for for this combination of symbol and each field in the update message. And then if we've got any subscribers, then we call the subscriber with the symbol field value and timestamp. And that's what's going to notify our subscribers. Here we're appending them to a list of tasks because each time we call this, it's an async method. So the async method will return us a task. And then later on, we can await for them all in one go. So rather than just 
A waiting for them one after another, we're just collecting them together and then A waiting them at the end. Uh, just to remind you, this subscriber method here is the same one that we saw here where we're passing in subscribe with our callback. And here our callback is this async method that takes the symbol, field, value, and timestamp. And in here we're just simply printing that. So that's what's being called from this process message thing here. The only other thing we're doing in this method is remember before we had this self data dictionary. And what we're doing is putting the latest value into that. So here we're, for this field, we're saying the latest value is this value and it arrived with this timestamp. That's what we used earlier in the subscribe method just to call the callback with the, the current state when it was first started. So in here, uh, we were getting the data for the symbol that was subscribed and then for the field, finding the latest value and the timestamp and calling the callback. So we're just doing the same as we were doing here. Uh, with the new stuff here. But in order to be able to do this, we're keeping track of the latest values in here. Okay, so it's a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna put all this code online later. Uh, so be able to go through it slowly. You can step through it in the debugger and understand what's going on. And you'll see that it's, uh, it's, it's maybe not as complicated as I'm making it sound at the moment. Uh, finally, we have this unsubscribe method, and that's really doing the same as subscribe, but in reverse. So it's finding the callback that we put into the subscriptions dictionary before, and it's removing it. It's then saying, if there's no subscriptions left for this combination of this symbol in this field, then just tidy up this, what would be left would be an empty list, so just get rid of that. And then we're saying, if this was the last subscription, so for this symbol, if there's no subscriptions left, then we send an unsubscribe message to the WebSocket. So that's gonna tell, uh, tell the WebSocket interface that you know we, we don't need any more any more messages about this and then just clear this up so just delete the, the the empty subscription dictionary from here and also just remove any data that we've collected so remember this data dictionary contains the latest values so just to be tidy we're we're just clearing that up because we don't need it anymore and then finally uh, if that was the last subscription we don't need anything else so then we can disconnect the WebSocket and that's it. So again, if I run this, we see exactly the same as before. Uh, we're just getting the updates for the for the last price for this ticker. Okay, great. So the very last thing we need to do now is to tie all this together and expose it to Excel. What I've got here is this bitmex pixel file. And in here, I'm importing the bitmax class that I just used. And from Pixel, I'm importing the Excel Funk Decorator and the RTD uh, class here. If you've not used RTD uh, classes in Pixel before, then if you go to the Pixel documentation, you'll find a whole section here on real-time data. And this will explain how we use this RTD uh, class and how we can uh, pass values from our Python code back into Excel so that Excel updates as we update the values. We'll go through that here as well. To begin with, what I've got is this uh, bitmex RTD function, and we're using the Excel Funk decorator to say to Pixel that we want this to appear in, in Excel as a, a worksheet function. This function isn't doing too much. All it's doing is constructing an instance of this bitmex RTD class. So let's have a look at that. Now this bitmex RTD class has a single bitmax instance uh, set as a class property here. Now this is the one we were just looking at in the previous file that contains all the code to handle the WebSocket subscription. In the constructor for our bitmax RTD, we're taking the symbol and field and just saving those as, uh, as attributes on our, on our instance. And here we're calling the, uh, the superclass, just initializing it with an initial value of waiting. Now, when Excel uh, gets one of these RTD objects, the first thing it's going to do when it's ready is call the connect method. So here I've got an async connect method and Pixel will handle that for us by uh, scheduling this connect method on the, the async IO event loop so we don't need to do any, any glue code here. And all this is doing is on our bitmex instance here calling subscribe like we saw before with the symbol and field but then for the callback it's using this update method. And our update method is taking the same that we saw before where it's got the symbol field value and timestamp but it's here setting the value property on the rtd object so if you look in the 
the documentation for the RTD uh, class, then the wait for this load. Yeah, here you see it's got this value property, and by setting this current value, this is what notifies Excel that a new value is ready and that it should update. So finally, in my pixel.config file for the add-in, uh, in my list of modules here, if I put in bitmex pixel, and in my Python path here, I've already got that I'm including this source folder. So now when I when I load Excel or I reload pixel, it will now import this, this pixel module from this path. And then we should see this function in Excel. So I'll start a new Excel now. And then let's just say, so yeah, our functions here. And if we say, what's the name of the ticker? XBTUSD and last price. That will then call this Python function and it returns us this RTD thing, which is now ticking. So every time we're getting something from the BitMEX WebSocket thing, it's feeding through into this RTD thing setting value here, and then that's updating there. Here I've just used the last price on this thing, but there's no reason why I couldn't have a more complex, more comprehensive sheet here. So here I've got, I'm just calling the same function, bitmex rcd, uh, but with a collection of different tickers and a collection of different fields. And now I'm getting all of these things streamed in uh, into Excel in real time via the WebSocket API using Pixel. Okay, well, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's shown you some, uh, given you some ideas about how you can use uh, WebSockets in your own code and how you can use that to talk to these crypto exchanges. And as always, if you've got any questions, then just contact us and let us know.